Hello, and welcome to PodNet Presents, a show featuring the creative individuals that come through the doors of our Community Media Center in Long Beach. My name is Riley, and I'm an intern here at PodNet. In today's segment, we invited members of our Long Beach community to participate as a panel of jurors in our studio courtroom. My co-producer, Mariam, and I researched and developed a list of real-life lawsuits that our jury members had to reach a verdict on. I had the opportunity to direct the crew, which was composed of several amazing PadNet interns and members. Mariam directed the cast behind the scenes and hosted the episode as the judge. This series is split into two parts. This episode is part one. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome jurors to the courtroom. I am your judge, Miriam Mahitharyan, and today I will be presenting you with real life lawsuits that you must reach a verdict for. It is the jury's responsibility to try to come to a unanimous decision. For each case, you will have five minutes to discuss with one another your own beliefs and reasoning for siding with the plaintiff or the defendant. But first, let's meet our jury members, starting with juror number one. Hello there, my name is Aaliyah Devine Taylor. I live in Wilmington, California, and I am a tarot reader. My name is Camden Hazer. I'm from the Bay Area, California, and I do community outreach. Hi, my name is Hosanna. I live in Long Beach, and I'm a nurse. Hi, my name is Louis Smith. I live in Long Beach, California, and I'm a content creator. I'm Pamela Johnson. I'm also in Long Beach, and I'm a writer and filmmaker. It is lovely to have you all here. You, the jury, will help us understand how people from different walks of life come together to reach the most fair and equal decision. With that said, let's begin with our first case. This court is now in session. So our first case, Weatherman versus Woman. This case demonstrates that there are really no limits to personal injury claims. It happened back when an Israeli weather channel got heat from a local woman when they incorrectly predicted the weather. The weatherman reported that the weather would be good, but it rained. And according to the plaintiff, this resulted in her dressing incorrectly and catching the flu. So accordingly, she sued the weather channel for $1,000 for compensation for the amount of work that she missed and for her medication. Do you think this was a fair ask or was it not the responsibility of the news channel? Let's go down and first say what everyone's initial vote is, then your five minute timer will start and then we'll re-vote. Juror number one. Yeah, I agree with the girl because one thing that I definitely don't like is not being prepared for any occasion and getting the weather wrong, it just messes up my whole aesthetic for the day and it just throws off my whole, what I got going on. So. I feel like she wasn't asking for too much in this case. I definitely see where she was coming from. Honestly, the way I see it, um, I understand that, yeah, she had a right to do what she did, but I really don't think that you can always tell the weather. You can't really just predict what's gonna happen. It's not always gonna be how it is. I see what she did, so, no, woman, woman. woman? Yeah, I'm with the girl too. I think uh, uh, it's good what she did because it's uh, very important for us to know about the weather so we can plan what we're gonna do ahead of time. So I'm with the girl, with the woman. I say the weather man because that's an act of God. No one can predict what the weather's gonna be. That's an act of God. So I totally agree with the weather man. I tend to go with the weatherman also. I think that you take it as a suggestion what the weather's going to be. I don't think they're going to be 100% accurate. And I keep an um, umbrella in my car because mm -hmm. life changes. Smart. So 3v2 is our current vote. Let the timer begin and deliberate, jurors. An act of God. I mean, I don't know how many of you all believe in a higher power, but it's just my opinion that that's something... Like the young lady said, you can't control that. Life is gonna always have a bump in the road or some type of something that you your expectations are never gonna be met. So it's best to be prepared anyway. So if you're getting dressed, like you were saying, you know, I'm dressing for what I predict the weather is, life, life itself never goes that way. So it's always best to be prepared. So I think it's on the young lady. She should have been prepared 
for inclement weather in well, either case. I definitely think that you have a point there, and I hear where you're coming from. Nobody really can predict the weather other than God. Mm -hmm. But I will say that I feel like she was not asking for too much in this case because what if, and we've all been there before, where we wake up late and we have to rush to maybe get to work and we don't have a car. So, you know, we're thinking, oh, crap, it's going to be sunny today, so we dress for sunny. And you go out and then it's too late. You can't go back inside and rechange because if you do, you're going to be later. So you can't go, go to work on time. And then not only that, but while you're trying to get to work, maybe you get sick. Maybe you catch a cold. And, you know, like I said, maybe that affects your work day and maybe something happens. And like I said, it just, it really just sets the tone for the rest of your day. Even though I understand that you can't predict the weather, it's why you're getting paid to at least get it somewhat accurate. But I don't think it's the financial responsibility of the weather channel to compensate somebody because the weather forecast wasn't a thousand percent accurate. Like, just think if a thousand people came at them saying you owe me a hundred dollars <laughs> because we got the flu. It's like you take it as a suggestion. I think also, I don't know where this happened, but I know in Southern California, we're pretty spoiled with generally getting really good weather. Mm -hmm. But I know when I lived on the East Coast, it'd be like, oh, the weather's going to be sunny. And then all of a sudden, the, the weather pattern changes. And that's something that can happen as well, is it was going to be sunny, but then there was a storm that came in from someplace or a hurricane gale or something. And, you know, that changes things. So it was accurate until it wasn't. I mean, yes, but when I think of like how much he was asking for or suing for yeah, you know, that's really not a lot. So it's, it, I mean, it's a big um, studio, sort of a weather company that's trying to not get sued. So I think a thousand is good. And I know heard you say earlier about, you know, what if everyone did it? But in this case, it is not everyone. It's our one plaintiff. So I can always speak about my one plaintiff and not for hypothetically if people did something. So I agree with the girl. Where I agree with her is if you were to, okay, things are set by example. If one person sues the news and gets a thousand, then that opens the floodgate for everybody to say, well, I was I, I was prepared for Sonny too, you know? I, I'm gonna say this, I'm ex-military. And in the army, you have to check, double check, recheck, and you have to be yep. prepared for everything. So because she didn't prepare, it's not on the, news company that have to pay her a thousand dollars because happen, she didn't prepare did you want to add anything I, I agree with the girl i think uh, it's not much what she's asking for <laughs> but i also another thing is sometimes people assume oh because i got cold i got the flu oh because i got rained on i got sick i mean is that true did she just get rained on? Did a lot of people get rained on that day and not get the flu? So if can we really say that it caused her to get sick? In her mind it did, possibly, but can we can she verify that? Can she back that up? And that is a good good point you're making. But one thing is for certain, I definitely don't catch a cold when I'm wearing a raincoat. Whether I get rained on or not, it definitely lowers the probability. We never know. We're all out in the environment breathing each other's air. I mean, mm -hmm. we just went through that pandemic. Some Absolutely. people got it, some people didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not a guaranteed thing that just because you get exposed to something that you're going to catch something. So I just, I kind of, I'm still where I was where I don't feel like the Weather Channel owes anybody anything because they're providing a service. They're you watch trying it. to. You, 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 you do. Yes, you we have 30 seconds left on the Yeah, call. you provide a service. You take it on advisement, but maybe you take you know, a sweater, an umbrella, you use it, you don't use it, but you're prepared. Things like the, happen. Like the ex-military man brother here. Things happen, you just gotta roll with it. Absolutely. All right, time is up. Jurors, we will now be voting again to see if a decision was able to be reached. Juror number one. My verdict is still the same. I think the girl, what she was asking for was reasonable and definitely fair. I think the weather man was in the right. I, I'm with the girl. I think the girl was right. So what she's asking for it. I'm with the weather man. Not a man. 
All right, so in an interesting turn of events, we've got a 3-2 decision for the weatherman instead. Do you guys want to know the verdict? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's the the woman did the win the case. I knew it. I knew it. And the TV station. <laughs> <laughs> had to pay her $1,000. Okay, so I'm going to start suing uh, TV stations every time they get the weather wrong. That's what I'm I mean, it's mm -hmm. like if you pay for service, though. Yeah. You, you want the service to, to work, don't you? It every day. Right. Yeah, but you should also go that. into that service knowing, <laughs> yes, it's going to work, but you can't get everything right. Right. That's like going to get your car fixed, and then let's say you go to the car mechanic, and you know it's supposed to be fixed, and it's not fixed. So you say, "Oh, well, you know, we shouldn't sue them because you know they tried." That's I'm just saying. saying. I'm just saying. saying. That's not an act of All God, right. though. That's a man's hands on my stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Man makes mistakes. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Right. So exactly. our next case is Uber versus divorced businessman. Oh, mm. gosh. What is the price of infidelity? <laughs> According to this particular French businessman, millions. So, this case started when this man borrowed his wife's phone to log into his Uber account. Oh. Although he logged off after, the app continued to send, him send his wife notifications of his whereabouts um, on her phone. <laughs> so, for reasons that were undisclosed to us, technically, his wife took issue with some of his whereabouts and filed for divorce. So, the man blamed Uber for the dissolution of his marriage, suing the company for $48 million. Ooh. Should the businessman win the lawsuit? Should he receive the full amount of $48 million as compensation? Keep in mind, this was technically a glitch in the app. Juror number one, what is your original vote? Um, I don't know. In my defense, I hear what he's saying about, you know, the inf uh, infidelity and possibly ruining the marriage, but $48 million? Mm. I'm sorry. I got to vote for, what was your two options? Uber and businessman. Yeah, Uber. Uh, I'm just going to make this plain, straight, simple. I'm going with Uber. I mean, you don't go through someone else's phone from the get-go. Yeah. I go with Uber as well. Yeah, Uber. Okay. I'm gonna go with the be the businessman. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, how you all in my business like that? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a wife, no my business. No, I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm going with one way or another. Right, exactly. I'm going with Uber. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go with Uber too. Sounds like the man needs to clean up his act. Right. Blame it on someone else for a glitch. Right. Exactly. Well, not for a glitch, for you, trying to cover your tracks. That part. Yeah. But it was a glitch that made it happen. Okay. Yeah. I know, but even then, it's like, you can't pay for infidelity. I Let mean, me ask you, <laughs> if it was not $48 million, but it was a... It doesn't matter. I'd say... Still not a yeah. 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 So, <laughs> All right. All right. That's the jury, that's about, the the jury is a firm, unanimous yeah. against yeah. the man. Now, this case is interesting because it requires you, the jury, to weigh different laws as both parties did technically break laws. Mm. So, mm. while out skateboarding in Lancaster, Pennsylvania... Got skateboarding. <laughs> yep. 17 year olds Jeffrey Klein and Brett Birdwell illegally entered property owned by Amtrak. They climbed to the top of the boxcar in hopes of getting a view of the city. However, little did they know, an uninsulated wire was suspended above the train. Mm -hmm. There were no signs or warning the teens of this wire. It jolted Klein with 12,500 oh, volts whoa. of electricity, wow. setting his clothes on fire and causing severe burns on 75% of his body. Wow. And Birdwell also received burns on 12% of his body when he ran to assist his friend. The teens and their families sued Amtrak and Northfolk Southern, which was the other owner of the, um, the property, for medical costs, pain and suffering, and loss of life pleasures. And, of course, the companies rebuted re re by saying that the teens were trespassing and should not have been there to begin with. Should the two companies be responsible for such an extreme injury occurring on their grounds, or was it the fault of the 17-year-old boys for trespassing on private property? Mm. Um, and we'll kick it off with juror number one. Yeah, I'm in the favor of the companies because, once again, if it's the big no trespassing sign and you decide you can read, can't you? exactly at 17 it's like even yeah. if you don't like you know 
like say like have some sort of problems, whatever, you can still read that this says no trespassing. I shouldn't be here. So if you go in there when you know you're not supposed to be there, then you're taking your own like, you know, safety at cost. So yeah. I think the company is I will right. say. Um, I'm assuming there were no trespassing signs um, as it was a closed off area with a you train. There yeah. was no yeah. signage for the wires. Off. Mm -hmm. If it's blocked yes. off though, it's yeah. like it's blocked off for a reason. That doesn't mean, hey, everyone come on inside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, currently yeah. now it does. But... Um, just <laughs> right. while we're on the topic of signage though, um, there was no signage for the wire. Oh, there was no signage. There was no si signage for the wire. But they knew they were trespassing. Yes. Yeah. And it I was, a, it was an yeah, uninhabited right. train box car yeah, I'm in with an the track station. I'm with the, I'm with the company. I'm going with uh, the company as well. I'm going to side with the boys because if that wire was exposed and it was not indicated as being dangerous or keep away or, you know, live wire, it, one of their employees could have gotten burned. The wire was live and any human being could have come in contact with it. Anyone could have Anybody could have gotten oh, burned yeah. over 75% of their bodies. Yeah. So yeah, I just feel like that was, you know, on their part, that was not um, good, you know, housekeeping and it put people at risk. If children were injured, you know, in the way that they were, that at the very least, they should take care of their medical expenses yeah. and, yeah. you yeah. know, That's even possibly, even possibly the their repair, college, like the do something minimum. on their yeah. part, whether it was, it doesn't have to be a huge outlay of cash, but I also think that it is on the company to have yeah. safe working conditions, not only. And companies should have insurance for stuff like that. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I'll agree with you on that, you know, but the boys still. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah. Very stupid. Stupid. People, paid a heavy price. I mean, everybody, you know, seated here and possibly, you know, surrounding us has done stupid stuff. I know I have. It's particularly yeah. at a younger age Absolutely. where you just kind of, you know, you did took a risk that you shouldn't have taken. And mm. fortunately, you know, some of those did not, you know, Result land us in land us in a, in a bad burn. place. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we have to kind of understand that, you know, as you're you're young and you do stupid things, but you know, shouldn't put your family, you know, in debt for years and years trying to medical bills. Yeah, and all trying that to stuff. recover your health. Right. You know, that's true. But same your time, future. like they're still seventeen though. Like 17. you have to be, like you know, have someone there to really tell you don't go off in a closed off area that you know it's blocked off at the age of seventeen. So you never did anything dumb at seventeen? I mean, I not I like that. I mean, well, maybe I was like you did uh, some other dumb stuff at seventeen, five. but I mean, it's not like you. Were... No, at seventeen, I was working. I was paying bills. I was helping my mom. There is I was a volunteering. Line. There is yeah. a line that you cross when you do something bigger than what's really threatening. Yeah, and even my brothers too. They've done the same thing. Like it's different. Like I understand. Not saying like I don't feel bad for the kids because I do. Maybe they should be compensated. Yes, but like I don't understand how like it really is on the company. Yeah, they should have secured the wire, but. Well, so that right there is, is on the company. So but I like to remind, there, what they're asking for is yeah. to be compensated for their medical costs yeah. and pain and suffering. That feels um, fair. For their injury. Yeah. So the um, that, feels that, fair. Is, that is the question. Uh, okay, basically. Yeah. Just for the medical. Just for the medical. Just for yeah, the yeah, medical. Just for yeah. medical yeah. Asking for more than no. 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 We'll play stupid games win dumb no. prizes. Exactly. So medical. Yeah, yeah medical, medical, medical nothing else bills. I would say okay. the medical, but medical medical anything bills. else, take it or leave it. Well, that's all they're asking for. All right. So you, you, the jury, would give them the medical bills and um, what about the pain and suffering? Pain, that, but getting the burned, loss of life getting burned ain't no Welcome joke. to the world. No, I, would, I, feel, I, feel like, I feel like the company is wealthy enough Ex absolutely. that they can show the goodwill of these children, children, still minors, uh, were injured on our property from a live wire that was not marked and they had a, a terrible outcome for our, the sake of our company, we can, you know, be a little more generous. Yeah, I'm with it. Yes. I agree they with They are you. rich, rich. Yeah. All not right. only that, people do judge. I, the yeah. court of public opinion. Exactly. Right. Judge. Exactly. Yes. People do judge. So I think we have our verdict. All right. Well, how much though should they get for him? We, that's not, that's the judge. <laughs> <laughs> that's Judge Mary in here. She'll, she'll let them know. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we're siding with the boys now. Yes. Right yes. here. Had a full swing. Pamela, you carried that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so 
In October 2006, a jury said that although the teens were trespassing, the 17-year-old boys bore no responsibility for the accident. Instead, the blame fell entirely on Amtrak and Norfolk for failing to post signs warning about ah. the danger from the electrified wires what? that power locomotives. Mm. So these are big wires. Ooh, yeah. really? For all their claims for suing, the teens received a combined $24.2 million. Whoa, oh, Jesus, wow. that's some money there. Well, wow. he did All right, so why, what, 75% of his body. Right. That's Yeah, that's a lot. It's not a small yeah. amount. <laughs> and like I said, the locomotive, those are huge. Right. Yeah. Those are yeah. huge. That's so a train, train wire. This next case is technically not another divorce case because these two were technically never married. Oh. <laughs> mm. So we've got Nicholas Cage versus Christina Fulton. Oh, wow. In the late 2000s, early 2010s, Nicolas Cage, who was born and raised in Long Beach, <laughs> faced a lawsuit of $13 million by his ex and the mother of his son. Her name was Christina Fulton. Mm. Fulton sued him under the grounds of emotional and psychological distress with a couple reasons for this. First of all, Cage had bought her a house upon their union, and she had quit her job in order to raise their son. Cage had promised to sign the house over to her to give her selling rights, but he did not, mm. and eventually served her with an eviction notice. <laughs> Fulton was also suing Cage for her tax and credit debt, claiming that he said he would pay it off, but he did not. And Fulton claims that despite arranging marriages for uh, pl mar uh, plans for marriages, Cage never ended up marrying her, mm. which also served as a legal enabler for their issues. Now keep in mind, the charges that he's being served with are emotional and psychological distress. Is Cage responsible for this distress of Christina Fulton, or was that not his liability? And juror number one, where are you leaning towards? I don't know. I feel like she's in the right because the emotional distress of thinking you're going to get married or having that promise, or even like that you're living together, and then all of a sudden get have that eviction notice. It's like, oh, we have to figure out how to handle that on top of the debt that he said he was going to pay. And even though, like, I understand that's not his responsibility, it's kind of, like, a bit of lying and deceit. Like she said, like, I is kind of playing, like, a mind game to have almost, like, faith that you're going to be person or whatever, mm -hmm. that they had talked about, the plans, the dreams that they were going to create because they have a child and he had her in the home, so it's kind of like he was painting the illusion. So I could see where she's coming from. I'm going with... Yeah, not Nicholas Cage, but the other girl. Yeah. All righty. No, I'm going to second that. I'm going with the girl because uh, I think he should not make so so many promises. And then, yeah, I'm with her. I'm with her, with and the then, girl. Then it's the mother of your children, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, and she has a child. Mm. Coming from someone who has two divorces. <laughs> the wisdom. Right. As <laughs> yeah, well, yes, bad. experience. As well as an uh, eight year custody battle. Oh. Yeah. And I just won recently within the last two months. So, congratulations, this guy. Congratulations. Um, with that being said, um, ironically, listening to the details of the case, I'm going to have to side with the young lady as well because I do feel that he led her on uh, and he did not come through with his promises. So at, at first I thought I was going to go with Nicolas Cage because I'm pro guy. However, when I heard the details of the case, it only makes sense. I think this woman should be compensated for her troubles. Okay. Juror number five? Yeah, I don't know actually what happened between two people. You know, that's kind of hidden from us. But I will say that they are parents, that she was living in the home, that there probably was a level of lifestyle that she was accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And it's whether it's 13 million, whatever the number is, but it does feel fair to not have her drop off a cliff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because right. of this ending of this relationship. So the two of them are not going on together, but they still have this child to raise. He, The mother still should be doing well, no matter whether they break up or not. And so I feel like she should have some, you know, more of a soft landing. Like at least a home or something, like right. anything. Yeah. Some type of compensation. Right. Knowing yeah. um, actors sure. and actresses. I mean, this is just what I think, I think, 
probably Nicholas Cage got away with it, just knowing how this stuff mm. works now. Yeah. Well, I do have the answer uh, right here. Uh, yeah. I do have exactly. one extra detail to add to this to case, well. though. Yeah, Uh-oh. Details, see, uh, see if this stirs wait. the pot. Maybe a little bit. Not sure. Um, it is notable that their son was over 18. Oh! oh God. When he served them. Oh, God. <laughs> so Nicholas was smart. God, like, thought I'd throw you a curveball with this uh, one. Although, although people so do this, tend to feel that at 18, from 18 to 24 is like transitional youth. Very uh, meaning that you're, you are of age, but, age, but you still, still are learning. Listen, just, I thought yeah, this would spice things up. I did not think well, that it would unanimously sweep the entire decision. And the mother goes, oh my my baby. I mean, right. yes, we're all our But they're still in, they're Absolutely. still in college. But they're still in college, and also I know no that mom. they'll they'll keep your insurance on your kid till they're like 24, 26, because yeah. they know that the kid a, is still getting 25. established in the world. Yeah. As a man, I can take my kids at 18. Why is it that you have to be responsible for raising the kid? So yeah, I'm going with Nick now. I didn't know. It was I mean, like the that. addiction yeah. part is still messed up, but the credit card thing. Mm, yeah. Sorry, that's not. Nick's problem. Yeah, I'm rolling with Nick on this one. All right. So, like I'm, st- I'm, st- I'm, stick- I'm sticking with the mom still needing still a transition. Mom, I don't think it should okay. just be like a cutoff. 13 million yeah. is too much, maybe a couple mil. That's what I'm saying. You, you know, know, the money piece of something. it, I feel like, yeah, I don't that know could be, that piece that of it, but the transition shouldn't just be cut off. Yeah, not just literally just an addiction vibe. It looks like that you guys have reached the same decision that they eventually came to um, because the outcome of this case was a private settlement that allegedly yeah. left both sides happy. There you go. Yeah, exactly. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, yeah. Makes sense. yeah. that yeah. feels fair. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Love it. Good. Perfect. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you are interested in participating in future episodes of Padnet Presents, we invite you to join us in the studio. Follow us on social media or join our weekly newsletter to receive announcements on upcoming production opportunities. Mary and I were honored to produce this episode and get hands-on experience directing in the studio. Make sure to stay tuned for part two to hear some more of the jurors' discussions. Thanks for watching Podnet Presents, and remember, make your media.